It would be lovely if the story ended with creation, uh, yeah, but it doesn't, of course. In chapter 3, a Adam and Eve uh, disobey, at least explicitly, what is the only uh, limitation that's imposed on them. And one way to think about what happens there in that, in that garden setting is that Adam and Eve have been given a choice. Uh, will they live as limited creatures? Or will they want to be, in the words of the serpent, like God uh, and be without limits? It's interesting that this tree that they are not to eat from is situated at the very center of the garden. That is, it's, it's central to their identity as God created it, that human beings were to accept that they were limited. And that one way of describing the fall is a, essentially a rejection of limits and a desire to be limitless. Well, if you accept that as an interpretation, that I think then has flowed into all of human existence, including uh, business. And so in business, what we see is a, um, a distortion of what God originally intended that can be described, I think, in part, or maybe even in whole, as a unwillingness to live within limits. This is why I think even though I would not make profit a first order purpose of business, I still think businesses owe a reasonable risk adjusted rate of return to investors on their invested capital, not as a purpose, but as really as a limitation. Uh, if you don't pay that back, you'll just burn through the capital and your business won't be sustainable. And you can come up with principles like that right down the line. This is another reason why I think Christians should be at the front edge of the living wage movement in this country. Uh, because if I, as a business owner, uh, use up uh, all of the productive capacity of my employee but don't pay him or her enough to live on, that's not sustainable. And so sustainability, I think, is one piece of this. And then uh, the other is, is respect. That is, do we respect the image of God in the other? Uh, and that, again, has lots of implications in terms of uh, pay issues, uh, workforce, uh, the way in which we treat our workforce, uh, the way in which we uh, deal with vendors in terms of respect and integrity. Much of the field of business ethics, I think, could be housed under those two concepts of sustainability and uh, respect. As much as we want to do everything God's way, it sometimes seems like there isn't really that option. Uh, that is, I cannot organize my business in order to provide good jobs and meaningful and creative work, produce good products that are sustainable vis-a-vis -vis the environment, sustainable vis-a-vis -vis my employees, sustainable vis-a-vis -vis my uh, investors, I, I, somehow that whole package won't come together. Usually it won't come together because market forces are such that they impinge on, on that and won't allow me to do all of that at once. And that's why I think much of the way we actually live out business is what I sometimes call this messy middle. Uh, we are people that live on the other side of the cross and resurrection. That means we believe that um, that cre new creation is breaking into our world, that, that new creation is here. And yet at the same time, we anticipate some day in the future when it will be fully realized. And we live in this space in between, uh, trying to live authentically to what is coming, even though it, we don't yet fully experience it. That leads us into questions about business ethics, and that raises some of those same kinds of issues. It raises questions about what do we do when it doesn't appear that we have a choice to do everything right? Where do we cut corners uh, on God's will? How do we think about that? Uh, and this, I think, leads down a whole nother road that we could go on for quite, quite some time. But at a minimum, it seems to me, it, it means that we need to be pursuing business with a sense of humility, uh, with a sense of absolute dependence on God, uh, and perhaps at times with a sense of uh, confession, even as I'm trying to do my best in business.